I'd expect people. All right, how everybody doing out there today? Do a video today on um, really the, the basics of troubleshooting. Uh, a lot of guys asking me how to read schematics, uh, how to troubleshoot using the hopscotch method. Method. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably do a part series series on just the basics of troubleshooting. This is really for people that are interested in uh, HVAC or just getting in the field and just want to know the basic. Um, first thing, you, you need this tool right here. This is a tester. Because first, I'm going to show you kind of like what. This is more high tech meter here. I just want to go over like what tools do you need to troubleshoot more of the basic uh, meter and um, we're gonna get kind of detailed in it but I'm gonna show you like the prices of meter like I say this is a fluke right here it don't have to be a fluke brand just a uh, brand that I prefer um, to me this, this is the best brand some people say field piece, you got UEI, but there's a lot of different brands of meters out there. I just get one that you're comfortable with. Um, but this is a fluke. This is a, uh, let's, it's a basic fluke. This is a fluke T5600. And this is a fluke 1587. And this is just a client tool. Like I so said, you just press the button, and when you check it for voltage, you got a green light on it now, I don't know if you can see it, but right now the light is green. If you touch any high voltage, it'll turn red. Uh, I'm gonna go on a couple websites and just see how much uh, different meters cost. First, I'm gonna look up the Fluke. It's on Amazon. And I also have a affiliate link with Amazon that I'll probably leave in the description. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But if you want to shop on Amazon, I will get a percentage of it. And uh, it'll definitely help the channel out as I try to make more, more content to try to help some guys out. So this, this is the TI5, what? No, T, T5600. See how much it is on Amazon. I think this is just the case. $13.99. So, so you're looking at about $100 for this meter right here. This is a good deal. Um, regular price $129 on this one right here. They got it almost $40 off. So that is a good deal right there. I don't know if it's a Black Friday deal or what? And like I said, you, you can check apps with this meter. Like I said, this is a basic meter. Uh, I use it for troubleshooting, but this particular meter right here, uh, it won't check capacitors. If you want to check the capacitors, it just pretty much check uh, continuity, ohms, uh, amps, and volts. If you want to check capacitor, you have to get a uh, capacitor you want to upgrade. Maybe I think this meter right here. I don't know if you can see it. I used to use my green screen, but this meter here may may check it. But like I say, this is just a, a basic meter for $92. Um, but this at least get you started. Let me get my screen off here. There we go. So that's a ninety-two dollar meter, but uh, Amazon. I mean, pretty much any kind of meter that you want, they have it. They look at it like a. Uh, let's go to Baker. This is a supply house right here. I mean, I have an account with them. 
you, got, you need a contractor license to get an account with them. Well, we're gonna look at that same meter and see how much they got it going for. Five, six hundred. Not coming up here. They may not have that meter there in stock. This uh flute, that voltage test I just showed you, that, that's a real good one also. Um, I had one just like that for, it's $142, probably find it somewhere else cheaper. But that thing lasts, somebody gave it to me actually. Uh, I think they had it for like eight years. And I had it, I still got it. And it still works, and I had it for like eight years. But the same thing as this climb uh, that I had. All right, so I don't see this go to carry and see if they got that loop. Sometimes your supply houses be a lot cheaper because you can go to like a Home Depot, Amazon, or Granger. But sometimes it'd be a little bit more expensive. So here it is, right? Oh we Gary got it for 153. So that's that same T5 600 If you go to Carrier, they got it for $153. And as you can see, you can go to uh Home Depot, I mean Amazon and get it for $92. So like I say, that is a good 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 deal right there. I think I paid a hundred dollars for mine. Um, now we're gonna look at the like I say I showed you the flute, this meter here. Like I say, I love this meter right here. This is my favorite meter. Uh, if you have the money, I I promise you. I, I highly suggest just go ahead and start off with that one. It's gonna cost you anywhere probably between six hundred and a thousand dollars, but it is a good investment. That probably be the only meter you ever ever need. Um, I forgot the warranty, but it does come with a warranty, and if it ever does break, you can always send it back to the uh, supplier and they'll recalibrate it or repair it for you. But that is the Fluke 1587. Let's see how much it is on Amazon. See, it come with a whole case. I, I actually, I have the case also somewhere around here. I think I had this meter probably about uh, four years, maybe four or five years. Never had any problem problem with it at all. Uh, as you can see, it is going for eight hundred dollars on Amazon. Almost ninety dollars off. The regular price is eight ninety nine. This screen here is eight ninety nine. Uh, this one don't come with the case, but you can see you can get it for uh, seven hundred dollars. This one here comes with a array of ho a whole bunch of different things. You can check amps. Twelve hundred dollars. You can probably you can get the whole setup. Uh, and it also come with this uh, fa uh, this motor um, uh, let you know what direction your motor going in. Come with like three alligator clamps. Like I said, you're probably looking at twelve hundred dollars. Like it, it is a lot, but this this thing here uh, it, it's a mega, pretty much. Uh, it's an installation test. It do it do pretty much everything. Check temperature. The whole nine yards it does everything, so it is it is an investment. Maybe if you're already with a company 
and they do some type of tool program let them know you want this one you probably can pay it off uh, on your check that's what I did anyway uh, I think I paid like I say $900 for mine and when I the company that I was with they uh, I think I paid maybe like $100 a week until I paid it off I paid it off in about two months so if you can do something like that, I highly recommend just go ahead and get it. If you see this Fluke uh, 117 right here, this is a great meter also. I know uh, a lot of guys have this meter. It's on $150. And like I say, this one here, you, you can check capacitors, uh, amps, pretty much everything. The only thing this meter is, is not a mega. You, you can't make motors or compressors or anything out, but you can own them out. So. But uh, I don't think it does the installation tests or anything like that. But that is a great, great deal right here, one hundred fifty dollars. Like I say, my my favorite uh, meters off are flukes. I had the fifteen oh seven, and I had a couple more uh, flukes also. Uh, it's a great brand. It says as we, as we scroll down, this one seven nineteen. This is a great deal right here. I mean, even if you can find. Uh, I'm about to say even if you can find ones that don't come with all the accessories like this one right here for $7.95 but I wouldn't get if this, if this one don't come with any accessory I, I wouldn't get it for $7.95 might well spend $100 more and get all the all the extra accessories but if you like I say but if you can just find one just a body for like three or four hundred dollars uh, you can always you know just uh, Go find some cheap leads. I want to say cheap leads, cause like I say, your life depend on your safety depend on uh, your meter. Because if your meter lying to you and you touch 460 volts because you take the unit off, uh, you can be in trouble. So invest in some quality tools. Um, like I say, the cheapest that I I think I see that one. Let's say seven hundred dollars. This is a good deal right here. I promise. Seven hundred dollars. You know, for all this, fifteen eighty-seven. But that's the uh, let's do fifteen fluke fifteen oh seven. That meter is just as good. You can make you can make with this one also fifteen oh seven. As you can see, it's it's going for like five hundred. Uh, the difference is probably quite a bit of difference in the two. But I know on that fifteen eighty-seven, you can check. Um, there's some VFD drives for your Skywa and a couple more companies that you will need that 1587 to check. But that's like I say, this is this basic uh, electrical that we that I'm really want to focus on right now. But uh, even if you're doing basic electricity, I promise you, if you can, if you can afford it, just go ahead and buy you a good meter. Um, no. You jump into big leads and go ahead and just get get a good meter, especially if you learn how to use this one. Uh, you won't have to waste waste the time going with the uh, less meter. Yeah, but these are meggers right here. I think yeah, that's an insulation tester. See, like these insulation testers right here, they say this is two hundred twenty eight dollars. Um, just. This uh, this this tester here, it doesn't check volts or anything like like that. It don't check, you can't check capacitor with it. I say you can't check simple volts. You can't check low volts with it. And you paying uh, almost three hundred dollars for this right here. Like I say, the fifteen eighty seven and the fifteen oh seven. That maker, all that comes inside this meter here and with this meter here. You can do a lot of other things with. You know, like I say, check temperature volts diodes, uh, capacitor rating, uh, check milliamps, millivolts, um, a whole, whole array of things with that one right there. Uh, let's see how much, let's see if uh, Baker sells that one. I'm, I'm just using Baker for example, but you can go John Supply, uh, John Stone, uh, Century, a lot of supplies sell them, depending on what region you're in. Uh, I would look up Granger also, because Granger are real expensive. Let me see. I don't, I don't know how to spell Granger. 
Actually, I bought my uh, I bought my meter from Grinch. Like I said, I went through a company. They had an account with them, but it was pretty much the same price. Uh, see, it going anywhere between eight hundred and a thousand dollars. So pretty much the same. Amazon, I think whatever about seven fifty. So you might can save fifty dollars. But shop around. You know, until you get you a good meter. Let's see how much Baker's is. Flute. 1587. It's insulation tester. See, they got it for $867. They don't have a photo of it, but, uh, yeah. Like I say, you're going to pay anywhere between eight hundred and a thousand dollars I'll say seven hundred and a thousand dollars for that for that meter right there like I say shop around and see if you can get a good deal on it like I say that that's the basics though um, trying to think what else let's, let's look up uh, so let's say you got your meter uh, Say another thing you're gonna need is safety glasses. Make sure you got safety glasses when you troubleshoot this equipment. Just, like I say, you're gonna uh, let the company don't supply them. You're gonna spend it with anywhere between five and twenty dollars on some safety glasses. Um, they can be clear or they can be color. Um, let me see safety. Electrical gloves. Let's see what they got here. You might want to use these also, depending on what kind of boats you're dealing with. A lot of commercial companies they'll keep this NASA in a safety apparel bag uh, with them. You see, that's $172. Uh, some companies require you have a face shield also when you open up some of this electrical equipment. A lot of times you're doing like residential, you may not, you don't really need all this. Cause I think anything under 208 volts, you don't really need all this kind of uh, uh, safety apparatus. But also do your research on, if you've never heard of it called PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. Um, like I say, be, be careful out here. I know a lot of time in, in our videos, we. <clears throat> we don't look safe, but uh, I'm very cautious uh, of my surroundings and, and what I'm doing. Uh, all right, that's that. Let me see. Like I say, I think we cover safety. You got your electrical. You got your meter. Uh huh. I don't know if you know what a lockout tag out is. Lockout tag out. It's lockout tag out. This is very important also. Um, so do your research on lockout tag out. Especially when you uh dealing with equipment and there's multiple people in the building or working around you want to be able to lock, lock the equipment out. All right, so that's that. So we got our meter. Uh, I, said, I, I don't want to just look up uh, Fluke just because I like Fluke. Uh, let me see if we can find something else. Uh, da, da, da. Let's go to Granger. Right? Like I say, grains are going to be a little more expensive. Well, not really though. Cause the grains, it, they are expensive, but like I say, that meter there, eight to a thousand, that's pretty much what. Uh, let's see if grains say uh, UEI. UEI tag. test equipment. Yeah, they got UEI. I heard that was a good meter. I never used it before. 
I know a couple of guys with them. A couple of guys got Kleins. Uh, see this you got going for 138. And it looks like you probably can check capacitors and stuff with that one. Like I said, you can look up field piece. Uh, another good site also, and they sell a lot of uh, uh, HVAC equipment. The Depot, Test Equipment Depot. You can go pretty much get all your meters. Anything HVAC you need, you probably can get it off this site right here. Like I said, they got flukes. Let's see what they got the 1587 going for. It's a wireless flute. Probably going to be up on the insulation tester. Right here, I should have clicked on that one. So, this is the 1507. Like I said, that, that was the first uh, insulation meter I had. It's going for 566. That, that, like I said, that's a good deal. 1587 look 719 right there there you go 719 what all it comes with hey everyone Amanda here from test equipment depot Today I want to walk you through what's in the box of the Luke 1587 FC insulation multimeter. So we're going to take the carrying case out. See what you got in there. Open that right on up. So when you open the carrying case, you'll find the software setup, as well as one remote probe. A test lead set, two alligator clips, and one K type thermocouple. And lastly, the Fluke 1587 FC. All of these components fit in this handy hard carrying case. For more information on the Fluke 1587 FC Insulation Multimeter, click on the link below. Thanks for watching another video from Test Equipment Depot. Alright, so see what they got. For $719, that's a good deal right there. But, uh, hey, I don't know how I don't know I don't know if that's a sale going on or if it's like that every day, but you should jump on that. This one here, see this one here come with everything though, the clamps. This one, yeah. Yeah. I'll look into that one right there for 809. Cause see this one comes with a CD, but you don't really need the CD or nothing like that. You you don't need that. I'll look in that one for 809. I guess all of them come with a CD. But they just showing this one by itself with no accessories. But you see when I clicked on it, she said it come with all the uh, accessories. So might want to look into that. Let's look up. Uh, let's look up field piece. I spelled that wrong. Yeah, here we go. 
like uh, say a lot of people, a lot of people love field piece. Standard, seventy five dollars. I think that's a little short one right there. I, like I said, I'm not really a fan of field piece, but I do own two uh, field piece. But the reason I do like field piece because they they come with a bunch of different clamps or accessories that you can use also for checking everything from gas pressures. Uh, they got one like where you can just you, you can take this head off and uh, uh, use a bunch of different accessories with it. Let me see if I can find that one. I, yeah, this may be it right here. Say it got the swivel head. Yeah, I think you can take this this top right here off, and, and like I said, different uh, tops you can put on them. Some you can check the CFMs. Uh, that's your, uh, when you check an airflow. Uh, like I say, some you can check gas pressures, uh, you know, amps, capacitors. Uh, so. Want to try field piece? Uh, like I say, you can't go wrong with them. But I, I can tell you this: the only uh, meters that I ever had was a field piece and a fluke. Uh, as far as all the other meters, I haven't really tried them. Yeah. All right. Like I said it. Uh, Test Equipment Depot though, this this is a good site. Yeah, pretty much anything HVAC. I'm going to do a video on all the basic things you need and all the equipment that you need for HVAC also. Right now I just kind of want to go over uh, the electrical components or electrical tools to make the job a whole lot easier. Like I say, don't, don't really waste no time on uh, on on, on uh, Equipment that is not good. Good. Let me see what kind of client tools they got. Yes. Yeah, see, I know some guys with this uh, client multimeter here. They seem to like it. it ain't but fifty dollars. I know. I know a guy used this. This meter right here. Uh, like I say, it looked like he had it for a long time. Uh, I only seen him use it a couple times, and the last time I did see him, he was checking voltage, and I, I know the unit had voltage to it, but it wasn't reading it. Like I said, he said the battery was probably gone out on him, but uh, like, like I say, I, I looked like he had the tool for probably a few years, so I'm sure it, it works, but. It just so happened this day it wasn't working. But like I say, that's a fifty dollar tool though. I mean I wouldn't really trust my life with it. But uh I'm sure it gets the job done. They wouldn't be on the market, I guess, uh if it didn't work right. And you see they got some going for a hundred and fifty dollars also. So um like I said, you might be able to go to a pawn shop or find something on Craigslist. Uh, let's do that. Let's see. Uh, let's do eBay. I never bought anything off eBay, but I heard a lot of people do find good stuff on eBay. So let's do Fluke. 1587 on eBay. There you go, right there. Fifteen eighty-seven, three hundred forty-nine dollars. It might it's, it's pre-owned, but remember, like I told you, uh, you can always send it back to Fluke, and they'll repair for it for you if something was wrong with it. But this might be a good meter right here. I mean, it, like I say, it may be worth a try. But I, I will tell you this: if it's not under warranty, the Fluke gonna charge about. At least two hundred dollars to fix that meter, though. Hey, they gonna charge about fit. I'm telling you, two hundred dollars. Look at this one right here. It's a fluke uh, for one hundred fifty nine. 
Look at this Fluke 1587 right here. And it come with, uh, like I say, some of these guys may be retired or anything. Uh, you know, they probably just want to sell their meter or they could upgrade. It might not be nothing wrong with it. They probably just upgrade. But $279, I might try to snatch this one up myself. He's showing you what, what a lead crack that right there look like. Yeah. So, but you can always just buy new leads. See this crack right there? Well, yo, I say something. Sometimes I just want to get on here and just shop around, look around. Uh, I say it don't matter what city you in. Like, like I'm, I'm in a big city. We got all kind of supply houses, but uh, today, you know, really, you don't really have an excuse. You got the uh, everything right. Right beneath your fingertips, so you can pretty, get on the internet. You can pretty much find anything you want, you know, for competitive prices. And uh, if probably if you wanted to, you could screenshot some of this stuff right here. Screenshot it and just say, <clears throat> I've seen some pawn shops with these right here with these uh 1587, uh, and they do come with fuses in the back of them. And sometimes a fuse it could be expensive also. So if you're going to pawn shop, you want to make sure it's working correctly. Uh, but like I said, you might better take this price to the pawn shop and, and, and hopefully you can negotiate with them. You know, try to compare prices. But um, that might be a uh, that might be worth trying. But any of these meters right here. So what you want to do is this say this right here. So this a fifteen. I'm gonna write it down. This a fifteen. I'm telling you, any of these fluke meters are good, but you want to compare the prices. So it say a fluke eighteen B. That's what they got on here. I'm, I'm gonna write this one down. Fluke eighteen B. And. Um, this one going for three seventy nine. Let's try this one right here. This fluke uh, three seventy six. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to Amazon again. Fluke <clears throat> 18B. So, brand new, this is meet $133, right? $133 for that 18B. You can get it brand new. Well, 17 or well, 18 or some 17. I don't know really know the difference. This is a 17B, I see a 15B, I wrote down 18, that's an 18B, I don't see the difference. But, it can't be too much of a difference. Let's say the 17B right here, and then you go back, the same 17B on Amazon, brand new is $133. You go on eBay and get it used for $129. So, that's, that's where you gotta be careful at. Uh, they say somebody try to say this this used media for hundred twenty dollars. You might well go and get you a brand new one and spend uh, you know twenty thirty more dollars. I probably get this this one cheaper, hundred eighteen dollars. So you're trying to sell you a used media for the for a higher price. So that's why I say that that's what, a lot of times you got to do is copy and paste this stuff. If you go on some of these used sites, just copy and paste. And then go back and you know compare the price, but we we already seen how much the uh, the uh, 1587s are. I wish he had a year or something on it, but this meter don't look bad at all. Look pretty new to me. No. Yeah. Like I said, I never bought anything off eBay before, but. Um, They've been around for for a long time, so 
should be all right. All right. Like I say, so like I say, get get a good meter. Get a good reliable meter. Don't 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 uh don't cheat yourself trying to you know buy something cheap. But it's like I say, it is a rewarding career. And uh, if you want to be in it for a long time, you can make a lot of money with it. So uh, probably be in this field from years, years, years to come. So might as well just invest in some good tools and take care of them. You know, if you want to buy buy the one with the case, I keep mine in the case. So I keep mine in the case. You know, try to take care of it. So let's take a look at some uh, electrical troubleshooting. So, let me see, electrical troubleshooting is a logical process of, of elim elimination. And, and when I say process of elimination, that, that when you're troubleshooting, that's, a, that's pretty much all you're doing. It's, uh, you know, just eliminating, you know. I don't know if you ever heard of the hopscotch method, method though. Like I said, save you a lot of a lot of a lot of time. And pretty much, you're just trying to, to find out if if a um, if operate switch open or close, if it's calling for it, um, uh, any safety. Just trying to make sure they op open or close. That's pretty much what the hopscotch method is doing instead of actually say you have a pressure switch and the pressure switch it's a safety uh, they say if you have high pressure or low pressure that safety uh, open or closed um, instead of you going to the actual safety itself a lot of times you're in a control panel and you're looking at a schematic and you troubleshooting inside that uh, control panel instead of going to stripping the wires and trying to find out if the safety open or close. But uh, got some basics here. Let me see. Move with. All right. So let's go troubleshoot is a logical process of elimination. In order to effectively troubleshoot, you must know the unit electrically. You must know what the unit is supposed to do and how it's supposed to do it. The function of each component used in the electrical circuit. The physical location of each component used in the machine. So, like I say, the physical location of each component used in the machine. So you really want to familiarize yourself with the equipment. And, and like, cause we're gonna go over, you know, a schematic, and and when we see that these uh, operating switches and these safety switches on the schematic, we want to know exactly where they at inside the unit, and we want to know what each of these switches uh, uh, does. So the interrelationship of component, electrical symbols and be able to read a wiring diagram to determine the sequence of operation. It's very important. Electrical symbols and be able to read a wiring diagram to determine the sequence of operation. I'm gonna circle that. All right, prior, prior to troubleshooting, ask yourself the following question. What should the unit be doing? Think about that. What should the unit be doing? What is the unit doing? What is the unit currently doing? From this, you will be able to determine what is the unit not doing. Do not waste time by troubleshooting circuits that are functioning 
Therefore, you should eliminate the good circuits by starting with the major load and work backwards through the control system. The chances of more than one failure occurring at the same time is very remote. Therefore, you should determine what is common with the major load not functioning. From this, you will be able to determine the most likely cause of the failure and pinpoint the component or circuit that is functioning. Determine the load side of the circuit and hopscotch the control system to find the fault. The load side of the electrical circuit is defined as the side of the potential closest to the majority of the power consuming device. You must be capable of comparing or replacing the defective component and determine the possible cause or causes of the failure. When finished, check out the complete system for proper operation. Okay, this is a contactor right here. This is a contactor, it says C1 and C2. That is the coil terminal. This right here may be like 24 volts or this may be uh, like 120, whatever the coil uh, this contact is rated for. Look like 110. And this is the uh, line side where the electrical or your phase is a three phase. Yeah, 120 volt coil. This is what the ele electricity comes in at. We call this the line side with 20, 22, and 23. Um, I say this, make it in layman's terms, make it simple. You, uh, this is where the power comes in you know, to your unit or, or to your uh, load side. And this the load side, the 11 comes before 21. Uh, the 12 comes before 22 and the 13 comes be before 23. So this is your low side. Like I say, until you get a call right here, like 24 volts or 120. And then your contactor, you know, we'll engage in. The contacts were closed and it'll send voltage through. Like water going through there. Like a bridge. You can say you look at it like water with pipe or whatever, but it's not water, it's electricity. So flowing through there. You see it's right here. See, these are open switches right here. They're open. It's your line side, it's your load side. See, lines, line side, 11, 12, and 13. L1, L2, L3. The power voltage source. L1, L2, L3. Remember low side, low mean, like when I say low, it comp, it mean compressor. Like your compressor, low side, it can be your fan. Uh, it can be a blower motor, that's your low. You know, that is your low, compressor, fan, whatever you got connected to the other side of this contact where the wire is going to be going to. That's your load side. Okay. See, this is a schematic. We're, we're going to break it down. That's your schematic right there. 
this component right here will be on a schematic diagram. You know, right now the switches are showing that it is open. So if you got a thermostat at the house or wherever your thermostat at, you're not calling for cool right now. It's your compressor. So if it's 72 degrees in your house, or, the, or your office space or your building if it's 72 degrees and your therm 72 degrees inside and your thermostat reading uh, or you got your uh, thermostat set for 74 degrees the contacts will show open when the uh, if you set your thermostat at 70 and it's 72 degrees inside it'll be a line going through the the contacts right here showing that it's closed and then you will have electricity be able to go through here because the terminals will close this one right here will touch this one all three of them will close because you had voltage going through it. It's your voltmeter use. See C1 and C2. C1 and C2. There's your contacts right there. You're not reading anything on your voltmeter. C1 and C2. Alright. That's a 24 volt coil right there. Example. It's your voltmeter. See, we got no cooling call. Let's let's start it at the top up here. It's your line voltage right here. Remember, yeah, uh, on 11, 12, and 13. On 11, 12, and 13. I say you got your incoming power. This your voltmeter. Pull my screen back up. This is your voltmeter here. All right, and these are your leads. These are the leads that they were referring to. You got your black one for your common, and then you got your red for your positive, a negative or positive. right here this will be your common and this will be your red right here okay so I say pretty much all they doing is you taking this black one right here I guess that I think yeah that's how they got it. so you got this black one you're gonna put it on 12 and you've got you got your uh, red one you're putting it on 11 right here take my screen off so on 11 and 12 right here you put your black one right here on 12 and you put your red one on 11 that's what we call what you got between 1 and 2 you got you say 11 12 and 13 but if you're in the field we like to say what you got between 1 and 2 so 1 and 2 you do one and two, and then you'll do um, let's say one and three or two and three. So you put uh, on eleven right here. You put you put your red lead right here on eleven, and you put your black lead on 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 twelve. So you're going across one and two right here. So you should get two hundred thirty-three volts because. That should stay hot all the time unless you got the main disconnect off. But in this case, we we got we got power. So on uh, they got their leads going from 11 and 12. That's this contacts right here. On this contact on 11, it's the same meter. It's switching up right here. So. 
from one and three on this vote meter, where you got one and three, they they gonna get two thirty two. Okay, they going from right here and right here with their meter. They meter is gonna say two thirty two. Then they checking from two and three. See that on two and three, which will be right here. Two and three, so twelve and thirteen. They gonna get two twenty nine. Remember, this is complaint. No cooling. The compressor is off. That's the complaint that you got. No cooling. So now we're gonna go at the bottom of the contact. Right here, remember on the bottom side of the contact. Now we're checking these right here 21, 22, and 23. So on the bottom of the contactor, we're doing the same exact thing that you did up top. Go put your meter on 21 and put another lead on 22. You got zero. Put this meter on 21. You got this one on 23. You're going from one, 1 to 3. You got 0. So on and so on. On this meter here, you got 22 and 23. You got 0. So, I mean, that can mean uh, several things. Uh, but we know for sure that we're not getting voted passed through here. Like I say, it could be it could mean several things. It might not even be calling for. Remember what I was saying earlier. <clears throat> if it's 72 degrees in there and the thermostat is at 74, um, it, it's not going to call for this. It. Why you don't have any cooling? But like I say, you could have. It could be numerous things. You could have a bad contactor. Some of your operating switches. Uh, the definition of operate switch turns the unit on and off normally open switches um, you know it, it, it operate switch is really telling the unit you know when to do something a safety switch it, it used to be normally closed um, it's just showing that it's an unsafe uh, condition because okay, you see the high pressure switches right here all right, I think you got disconnected some kind of way, but um, like I say, high pressure, low pressure switches. What are high and low pressure switches? This is a low pressure switch here. This is a low pressure pressure switch. See the two wires right here. There's a switch inside of here, what we call like conti what continuity goes across. If this switch opens up, so on a low press switch, let's say 14A refrigerant, anything below 75, this switch is gonna open. Let's go back here. See on this low pressure switch, if you see the contacts, you see this line right here is touching this little circle or this ball. That means that that switch is closed. It should be closed to let the refrigerant flow through. Well, not refrigerant, the electricity. Um, like I said, that is a safety switch. If this, if it goes below 75, this little arm right here will open up and it will, will not allow the electricity to flow through. So I'm going to go back to that. Like I say, this hit right here, low pressure switch. That would be 410A or any safety switch pretty much. Operate the same way. Let's say uh, if this was R22, it would be different. R22, the low pressure switch may open it like uh, I don't know, 35 PSI. Anything below 35 PSI, that switch will open up. Because R22 works at a lower pressure than 410A. Like I said, that switch will open up. Let's look at the high pressure switch. This is the high pressure switch. 
And don't tell me when it opens up, do it. So let's say this 14A, this this is a high pressure switch. Oh, here it goes. It's opened up at 600 PSI. This is on your high side of, of your gauges. See, we're doing electrical troubleshoot right now, but once you get way around it, all these components are going to uh, you kind of work together. Now it's going to go full circle and make sense. But as far as the refrigerant go, on your condenser coil, just say if you had a, a bad condenser fan uh, motor goes out, and the only thing that's running, running is the compressor. Your, your head pressure is going to get really high and it's going to, if it goes above 600 this switch is going to open up because this is a normally closed switch once your pressure goes above 600 it's going to open and it's not going to allow pressure to go up see that stem on this circle is above the ball it's indicating high pressure that's a high pressure switch so if it goes above 600 it's going to open up it's not going to let refrigerant flow through well not refrigerant so keep saying that but it's the same concept pretty much water electricity anything you can kind of use these schematic as you that's how i kind of learn anyway i i used to always say uh you know water flowing through more like a bridge or a pipe or something like that. Or if I know I got a uh, bridge with, with water going through it or um, or even a car, they're going over a bridge. You know, if a car going through here, driving through, if they open up the bridge, the car cannot get, get through there. You know, so once you, uh, like I say that, I just want to show you what is a high pressure switch and a low pressure switch. Uh, all units do not have them. Uh, a lot of residential units may not have the. Once you get into the uh, the basic brand, sometimes if you just buy the, you know, basic 14 series or something like that, or uh, just the basic, not a high end. Just say if you got a carrier, or you, carrier unit may come with them, but some don't. Uh, if you get a Bryant unit, it may or may not come with it. Um, Thing. you might want to install them but uh, if it's on a schematic it should be on there this is optional but that is a high pressure switch so it's a uh, I think the CT maybe this is like a uh, internal overload the temperature thing so if the compressor get too hot it's the same concept with all the I think the relay. I'm not sure. I don't have the uh, the diagram, but I know this temperature right here. So let's say this internal overload. This is going. To, you can't see this, but it's going to be inside the contactor. Let me see if I can find one. Or inside the compressor. Compressor internal overload. So I guess this would be a coping. So these, so the internal overload is gonna be inside the compressor. If it, if the compressor gets too hot, so let's just say if it even get low on refrigerant, and it and and it does not have the low pressure switch. If the unit don't come with this low pressure switch, and it's getting low on refrigerant, uh, there's nothing going to be able to tell that that unit is uh, getting low on refrigerant because it doesn't have this safety. It doesn't know it's below 75 psi so the unit is going to continue to run but hopefully your compressor has a uh, internal overload on the inside so once it heat up this compressor get re really hot 
it's going to open that overload uh, relay up, uh, that overloads uh, temperature control, and it's, not, it's going to shut the unit off. It's not going to let let uh let the, it's it's still going to have. I think it's still going to have voltage to it, but. Uh, Cause we're looking at the high voltage. Still gonna have voltage to it, but that compressor is not gonna run. If you see the uh, L1, L2, at 230 volts. Uh, but this is showing you an example of of the, of the switches. But so if this it turn the overload open, it's not gonna uh, the unit is not gonna run. So you can have voltage at the bottom of your contact still. You can. This 24 volt may still be, or uh, 120, whatever, control in the coil. It still can be engaged, but your compressor would not be running. You still have uh, three legs uh, hot going to it. Uh, until the compressor cools down, when the compressor cools down, this switch will close again and the unit will start back running. As I read through some of these, this is, uh, we'll get into the hopscotch troubleshooting method. Let me see, the, by the logical process of elimination has been determined that this circuit is the most likely cause of the problem. 230 to the circuit has been determined. The problem will be an open switch or an open contact coil. Electrical troubleshooting 230 volts. First, determine the low side of the circuit. Okay, low side, we got L2, L4, and this line side, L1. So the low side is the side with this uh, contactor at. Or compressor. I think this compressor. The low side is the side of the potential closest to the majority of the power consuming devices. Electrical troubleshooting 230 volts. For example, the compressor is off on the internal overload temperature thermostat. Okay, this example right here. You see this internal overload. Now you see where this switch, where the bridge, where we say the bridge has uh, opened up. So uh, Cars can't go through, or water can't go through. In this example, electricity cannot go through because the compressor either got too hot and the switch opened up. Cause it, these little lines right here mean temperature. That's a temperature right there. Uh, that's an oper operational switch. But this has opened up. Everything else was closed. The low pressure switch will close. The high pressure switch will close. I don't know either. You could have, uh, let's say, if you have uh, one of your legs or something may have come 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 loose from the compressor. You may have open that switch up because um, none of the safeties open up. So I don't know. Murphy's law. Anything could happen though. To maybe. The, the compressor open up to protect the low pressure switches. I don't know, but for some reason, your uh, internal overload open up. And none of these safety catch catch it. But this is a safety right here. The internal overload is a safety. So it, hopefully it did its job or it's bad. Because it could be faulty also and just open up on its own. So. Electrical troubleshooting using an alligator uh, clip. Place one voltmeter probe on the low side and then check for the uh, check for a circuit potential. All right, so on your black wire, you're gonna put 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 an alligator clamp on number uh, four right here or or your wire. Just put it on the wire right here, and then on your uh, your red lead, you put it on one. So that's L1 and L2. You should get 230 volts. 
thought we were doing three phase, but I, I don't know. They gave me an example. Uh, I guess it's two single phase. So you should get 230 votes. All right. You got your leads. All you doing is, like I say, so you got a single phase contactor. Since our example gave us a three phase, let me find a single phase contactor. Just make sure we're on the same page. Let me see. Oh man, I can't spell today for some reason. But uh, this is a single phase contactor right here. So, L1 and L2, you put your leads on here. Like so you get your leads. Get your leads and all we're doing is going from L1 to L2. We should get 230 right there. Single pole contactor. All right. That's a single pole contactor. So, like I said, we put our leads on L1 and L2. Bam, we got 2.30. All right. So, I guess this is this cont uh, compressor. So, put your leads and say next check voltage directly to the load in question. So we have put out put a lead on four and put your lead right here at this con uh contact. <laughs> say say two thirty VAC safety's okay. Check contactor or compressor if zero volts doing hop sky safety. So we need to if, we, if this compressor we're checking right here and we got zero, we need to check check the safety. And you see the safety is open up right here. It's pretty much like you got a line. Uh, it's almost like you got your uh, the wire on one line. All right, electrical troubleshoot. Let's say we put four. And this is the hopscotch method right here. So we're just going from safety to safety. While we're going to go from bam, 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 bam. And we're doing this with the voltage on. You can't. We'll talk about that later. I will say continuity with the unit off. but uh, So put a lead on number four. And this relay right here on number six. If everything is a troubleshoot the safety circuit working from the line toward the load in question. So we want to start from the line going back to the load, to the compressor or the contact. So we're going to work our way back to the load. Troubleshoot the safety circuit working from the line side toward the load in question. Remember this, uh, it says right here, it's open. So that's why we're troubleshooting this. But we don't know that. But we, but we're trying to find it. As you see right here, if I go from L2 to this number six relay right here, I got 230 30 volts. Okay, got 200, 230 volts at CR1, contacts closed. Uh, zero at CR1, the contacts are open. Then you got to find out why. So we went from four to six right here. And if we get zero, we got to find that. That's That means that switch will be open. We will have to find out why is that relay open. So we'll know to start troubleshooting right there. Okay. So troubleshoot on the next one. Now we on our low pressure switch. Troubleshoot the safety circuit working from the line side toward the load and course and same thing. So we put our black leads on, on this L2 and we'll find that uh, the low pressure switch. 
hopefully this is out of control boy but uh, anyway 230 low pressure uh, contacts are closed zero the low pressure switch is open find out why so we went from four to the low pressure switch and we get zero we need to find out why the low pressure switch is open so like I say remember this is the low pressure switch right here so we would we if, if, if we went to zero to uh, I mean a four to four to the low pressure switch or the line to the low pressure switch and the low pressure switch was open we would have to investigate that that one we need to go to the truck and get the gauges and find out why if that low pressure switch open maybe low refrigerant or you could have a bad low pressure switch next is the high pressure switch we're working from the line side all the way back to the low so we put our leads on L2 and then on uh, on the uh, high pressure switch she'll get 230 we don't get 230 we get zero the switch is open gotta find out why got a high pressure switch may have a bad condenser fan motor but it opened up above 600 could have a bad fan blade could have some dirty coils fan could be going the wrong way numerous thing bad switch damaged coils but we have to find out why if that switch open All right. same thing troubleshooting OL 230 that switch is uh, closed you got zero it's open we need to find out why same thing with uh, the other OL 230 we good you get zero need to find out why okay I mean we already knew the internal overload was open so now we at at the uh, internal overload see we got four then we went on to the uh, contact and now we got zero on this we put our leads at on that uh, safety switch and we got zero So that, that means we need to troubleshoot and find, find out why. That's internal overload. We know our compressor got too hot. So we probably need to feel, 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 feel on top of the compressor, see if it is hot. And uh, maybe get a water hose if it is hot and try to cool it down so we can close that switch. That switch still close. Or like I say, you could have a faulty switch. But 2.30, the contacts are closed. But we got zero on our meter. So we need to find out why. All right, checking voltage at the contact. All right. Let's see there. So reading should be plus or minus 10% of the name plate voltage three phase motor so I don't know why they, this worksheet jumping back and forth on me but so three phase motor that so they just say we got a um, let's say 460 and we plus 10% If you do got 460, that's a nameplate three phase says you could have up to 506. Anything above five, 506 volts, if you go um, from 11 to 12, or 11 to 13, or 12 and 13, you get anything above 506, you need to uh, 
look into that. Maybe it's an electrical problem, but you got too many votes going to the, uh, the circuit. Uh, anything less, this, we're dealing with 460 votes. So I'm going to do 460 minus 10%. That is 414. So anything below 414, we need to investigate that. Reader should be plus or minus 10% of the name plate voltage. So let's, let's do 230. And all I'm doing is, let me show you. Let's see what calculate. All I'm doing is 230 plus 10%. Let's see, 230 plus 10% at 253. So anything above 253, we need to investigate that. So I'm going to do minus 10%. Okay, anything, anything below 270 vote, 207 votes, we need to investigate that. All right, both high voltages and low voltages result in excessive current draw. Contact, remember to check for pitted contact points. So, where well, you see this closed right here, see now it's closed. Remember earlier, these was open. So now the unit is calling for cool, so these contacts have closed. Say, so remember to check for pitted contacts. Remember to check for voltage imbalance between phases while motor operate maximum plus or minus 2% volt imbalance. And the pitted contactor. Let me see if we have any examples online of a pitted contactor. But a pitted contactor, either a dirty contactor or where it has been like welded shut. several I'm trying to get a good one I'm trying to get a good one where it's obvious that it's pitted but a lot of times you can use a contact cleaner or, but if you got a pitted contactor probably need to replace it like see these right here that's that's a pitted contactor Let me see. Let me see. So you see these right here? Like this contactor here is good. Let me see if I can slide this over. See these 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 are good contacts right here. But see how this one is black? That's a pitted contactor right here. So once you get a call for cool and this contact goes in, these goes in, and you want your electricity to go through here, if these things are pitted, you can't get a good uh, flow through there, good electricity flow through there, and you can call a uh, imbalance, a phase imbalance. So. Uh, So uh, they say you can have plus or minus 2% of that phase, uh, phase imbalance. This is why the unit is operating. So you don't want to go, if it's operating, I think uh, I think they're saying from 11 to 12, you don't want to imbalance. This should go, this should go straight through here. So this say, so if I got 230 volts, I got 230 going through there and plus 2%. That's 234. So if I, if I got 230 here, 
I can't have over 234 on 21. These need to be plus or minus 2%. Flowing through there. Plus or minus 2%. So, and like I say, and when you're doing maintenance, a lot of times we forget to check this stuff. A lot of times uh, when you get in the field, you need to check this every time. From 11 to 12, out from the top of your contact to the bottom, bottom of your contact. That's why it's working because you can you that's where you make your money at because you wanna you wanna even look into because you can have a bad contact you know a pity contact so you need to replace this contactor right here we need you know look into it why you getting that imbalance right there and like I say it's just two percent so you had two like I say you had two thirty going in and two thirty five you need to find out what's going on right there because that's a phase imbalance probably need a new contactor. Selling new contact, you know, that's how you make your money. And at the end of the day, at least you can write it up and you're gonna recommend getting the new contact. It's up to the customer, you know, but if they come back uh, a few months later, they got a bad compressor because they had a bad phase imbalance. Uh, if you document your paperwork good, you know, write, write, write it up that it was a phase imbalance, you recommend replacing it. You know, you you can you can cover cover yourself and let them know, and then they're gonna have more trust in you also because um, they kind of know that you know you were doing your job and and you did recommend that. All right, three phase voltage imbalance check. Okay. One, okay, we got a meter right here on number 22. And we got a one on 21, so we got 243 right there. Okay. Okay, so they, they they're going phase and bounds across the load. So we got 236 right here, 238, and 243. On the attached diagram, draw the leads from each of the three meters to show how to read or check for voltage and balance in a three phase circuit. Let's see what I hit. to add all three of these up. So on 243, write that down, two, it's right here, 243 to, divided by three is 239, after the three phase reading. We average that out. Seventy-nine, average to three. Uh, Two thirty-nine. Oh, average the vote. Three phase votes is imbalance check. here percentage of voltage and balance 
I'm gonna see what the income if we had 243 here. Let me see. 230. Trying to see, got me lost right here a little bit. Let me see, 240. I mean, I see the 243, 236, and 238. Yeah. I like to meet all they checking it from uh like I said earlier from one to two, two to three, and three to one. And write all of them down and divide them by three. We'll add them all up and divide them by three and you get two thirty nine. That's your average reading across. All right. Three phase bolts and balance check. Thing we did to 239 from A to B. You, you can call that one and two, and that's two and three, and that's one and three, same thing. Then just minus this, you got four, 239, take away three, and that's one. Percentage, voltage, and balance equals 100 times. Four, and the average of all of them, which is 1.7. I got that 1.7 is less than 2%. Find the maximum voltage deviation from the vote from the average voltage. Four. Okay, find the maximum voltage deviation from the average four. So that was the highest one at to uh, 243 I guess the minimum was 239 is that how they work I don't know. find the percentage of voltage and balance that was a 1.7 So this uh, this compressor is not running right here. You got zero voltage at the bottom. I guess you got zero voltage up top with all the 233, 232, and 239. So you got line voltage, but no load voltage. I right, voltmeter use circuit hopscotch. This is the fun part. So circuit hopscotch method. That's the same exact thing what we did earlier. You all your, your uh, safeties and your operational switches. You see right now they are all closed. You get that one, your black meter, put it on, uh, let's say C2. And you want to start from the farthest away from your load. If you want to, if, if it is a uh, contact, you can put your meter, just to be on the safe side, you can put your meter on every one of these little dots right here. Cause remember, we want, this, we want a straight line of continuity going back to the circuit. I think this is uh, 24 volts here or whatever your core voltage is. Okay, so this your this your red leads. We'll go this normally close. 
So we're gonna go to every one of them, which is hopscotch. On all your safety. Is it? If voltage circuit is complete to that point, oh, I'm sorry. If voltage circuit is complete to that point, like I say, you put your black leads here. I, I think this low voltage. So let's say this 24 volts right here. We if, if we get 24 volts on our meter, we know all these safeties are closed. We're gonna go to every one of them. That's the hopscotch. Let's go to every one of them. If you do that, like I say, you got your integrated clamp. If you got no voltage, circuit is incomplete at that point, and you found the location of the circuit interrupted. So, like I said, we did that to every one of them. We were getting voltage, but we come to this one right here, you get zero on that low pressure switch. We know we need to investigate the low pressure switch and go get our gauges and hook them up to the unit. Whenever troubleshooting any electrical circuits, you want to use a method that is file proof and works 100% of the time. That method is hopscotch. Key points about electrical meters and a meter. Uh, probably not pronouncing it right. Measures current flow through an electrical load. It's an amp meter. <laughs> unit status. Always use with the unit on and loads operating. Notes. Clamp on type. Most common. Yeah, so that's an amp. They saying an amp meter. So when we're checking amps, uh, measures current flow through an electrical load. I always use the unit on and the load is operating. Like I say, so if you get a clamp meter like this one here, this, uh, if you get a wire, I did say this is a wire right here. The unit has to be running, but I put my, uh, my, uh, my clamp meter and you know around the wire and I should get uh, hopefully close to the uh, yeah, I gotta be close to it but I should get an amp reading it can be it can be high amps it can be low amps you know but uh, we'll determine that from the nameplate and what it should op be operating at and uh, from the manu manufacturer specification so on the voltmeter it measures determined voltage available to an electrical circuit. Unit status used with unit on. So we checking volts. Like I said earlier, let's say this contactor right here. If I'm checking volts right here, across here, let's say if I get 230 or whatever, 208 from 1 to 2, I know I got volts should the volt should be going going to my load my compressor if i don't have anything here and the unit is on i know i don't have any voltage going to my compressor so that's the voltmeter it measures it determines voltage available to an electrical circuit okay unit status always check your volts with the unit on if you don't have the unit on there's no way you can check for voltage Okay, ohm meter. Uh, uh, that determines continuity or resistance of an electrical circuit. The unit status on this never used with the system power on. Okay, so when you're ohming some or checking continuity, which would be these. Let's see if I can see that. This right here, that this right here mean beeping. This the ohms right here. So so either or. That's ne never check uh, for ohms with the unit running or with power to the unit. 
but you can use the hopscotch method with that also. So let's go back up to the hop, hopscotch method. Let's say the power is off right now. Uh, if the power is off, let me just make sure. But I think all yeah, all these safeties should still be closed right here on the bottom right here. So all these safeties should be closed. So if I'm using the hopscotch method, I'm gonna use I'm gonna go through this do the same thing. I'm gonna put my close this. Put my black lead on C2. I said put the black lead on C2, which will be right here. C2. And then I'm gonna put the red lead and this with the power off. So we're not worried about votes. This won't say votes. This will say on O H M S uh, continuity. It will not say votes right here. So I'm going to um, Put the black lead on C2 and put the red one on one. I should get, we go back here. I should get a, uh, either a read to own or I should get a beat. So if I go from that black, if I go from black then on that C2, and all it is is continuity. See, see, I'm beeping right now. Should get a reading also. See that? Cause I'm going from C2 to that one down there, from right here. I want, I, I want everything to be flowing through. See, right here, I'll be flowing through there. Let's see if I can slide this over. So I want everything to flow through. So it's going to beep. Now if I go from that's, that's C2 to that normally open 3, CR3 down here, right here, I should get a beep. Okay. If I go to my high pressure switch, go from C2 to that high pressure switch, I should get a beep. If I go to this low pressure switch right here, should get a beat or something, something, some resistance. The temperature switch right here, I should get a beat. So let's find one. See on this right here, we go to hopscotch and I'm going right, right there. If, if I put my lead, I still got my black lead right here. And if I go to nine right there, I'm not gonna get a beat. It's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an OL on my switch because that safety is open right there. So if that safety open right there, like I said, I need to go troubleshoot. I need to go troubleshoot that board. I mean that uh that compressor. All right. So a multimeter. Okay. So all these are individual meter. I should have read this before I start doing it but it's fine so basically he was saying uh, if uh like when i started off early when i said this meter right here can't cannot check uh for if a capacitor is bad or not um that's what the multimeter for multimeter pretty much do everything but this amp meter he got right here i guess all the only thing it checks is amps i guess he got a meter that only check volts and then he got a meter that I only check ohms or resistance. But this multimeter says combined function of all three types. So this multimeter, which would be this one right here, it it you can just have this one meter and then can check everything for uh for you instead of having three different remember I saying you might have one meter that doesn't do everything, but that one meter costs two hundred dollars. This one could cost two hundred, and this one could cost two hundred. So you you pay six hundred dollars for for three meters. Well, maybe you could have spent six hundred or eight hundred for, and they got a lot cheaper. I'm just you giving an example. Uh, you could pay eight hundred for a, a one that combines all three of those functions. So it combines all th three of those functions there, and uh, and it depends on. The unit status depends on what is used, pretty much. 
So if I had this multimeter right here, and if I want to check volts, voltage, I know my unit need to be on if I'm gonna have it right here on volts. I know if I if I want to check uh, ohms or continuity, one of these two, I know I need to have the unit off right here. Which one? Yeah, right here. Never on. If I know I, I need a, I don't check amps with this one, but this one does check amps. I just need to uh, I don't have the extension for the amps. But if I were checking amps with this, I would make sure that the unit was on also. Alright. When all or some portion of the unit upon which you are working still functions, which meter are you most likely to use? Volt meter. When all or some portion of the unit. Yeah. So that basically asking the same thing. If the unit is running, you want to use a volt meter or because um, the unit is functioning, so you want to use a voltmeter or amp. A compressor and outdoor fan are controlled by the same set of contactor contacts. The outdoor fan is operating, but the compressor is not. Where should the first measurement be made with a voltmeter? Uh, well, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but I probably still will. It's showing. It's showing a. Um, they saying that if the condenser fan and the uh, compressor is uh, hooked up to the same contactor right here, but the the, uh, the fans are running, which means it's calling for it, but the compressor is not. I probably will still. St just by habit, I put probably put my uh, my meter at the the L one L two, you know, just to make sure ain't nothing funny happening. Uh, to make sure I do got voltage going to the compressor, but uh, there's something going on. Uh, probably that internal overload that I was saying. This switch right here. Let me see. This switch right here is probably open. And, that compressor probably got too hot or you can have a bad wire a clip wire or something like that going to the compressor and it's not turning the compressor on or you probably have a bad capacitor uh, to your compressor it can be a number of things but I probably would uh, they say uh, away from the compressor terminals at the contact of terminals. Yeah. Yeah, I will make sure I got voltage going to the compressor and then um, and I say I wouldn't take the terminals off. I mean I wouldn't take the cap off at the terminal until I verify to make sure I, so yeah I check it at the bottom of the contact. Alright so two thirty Volts, 230 volts, voltage measurement, checking the voltage applied. L1, L2, so it's going, so they're checking the parallel. You're going to T1, T2, so this is your contactor right here. It's the same exact thing this, this is. So we're going to make sure we got voltage going, going through here. It is going to a run capacitor. Here's your compressor. Got an amp meter right here. All right, residential and light commercial 230 volt single phase AC unit should be operated at what percent above or below its name 
plate rated vultures to avoid overheating and starting problems. And we said that early 10%. If you have no idea of the actual voltage to a unit, what steps regarding the voltmeter should be taken when reading the voltage? Start with the highest scale on the voltmeter. I did this a long time ago. I start the highest scale of the voltmeter. If you have no idea of the actual voltage applied to a unit, what steps regarding the voltmeter should be taken? I don't really understand that question. Start with the highest scale on the voltmeter. Mm, you using digital meter. I guess that's for some type of meter that, like this meter here, uh, if I go to voltage, uh, I don't know what the rating for, but I think it probably goes to 800 volts, if not more. No, I say, uh, yeah, 1,000 volts. So this one goes to uh, you know, like 1,000 volts. Um, So my mine gonna automatically go to the highest scale, I guess, but all right. Two thirty voltage measurement, checking the voltage applied. To read voltage in a circuit, how should a voltmeter be connected? You got see a is in series with a load. B is in series with the power source. It is C. In parallel with or across the load. So parallel, pretty, you know, it means T1 and T2. If it was in series, you'd be checking L1 and T1. You don't want to do that. You should get zero. If you go from L1 to T1, you would get zero. But, uh, when you check it for votes, you want to go parallel across. Uh, this same thing is parallel right here. One and two. Let me, let me see another one. Series would be from checking 11 and 21. But parallel, it would be 11 and 12. 11 and 12 is parallel. 12 and 13 is parallel. And 11 and 13 you check in parallel I'm not do all these today. I'll probably do a part two. Cause it's been a long win. I don't know how many how long I know it's been well over an hour. If you have no idea, I think I did that one. Thought we did it. The hopscotch procedure begins with placing one of the voltmeter probe with the alligator cramp clamp on the low side of the circuit which would be right here C2 and then just bam 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 I hope I hope I'm making this clear how to do the hopscotch met method though um, let me take a look at something I want to make this clear using the hopscotch method let's put this let's, I'm trying to do some real world. Let me see. Uh, trying to look. 
get a electrical cabinet maybe. Trying to see an actual uh Most of you gonna be using hopscotch on commercial equipment. You can do it on residential also, but a lot of times residential you don't have much. Let me see if I got something. I usually have some uh, schematics. In the PDF. Twenty time. I think they just gave me a bunch of residential equipment. I say this right here. Trying to see if they're gonna let me grab the picture instead of sending it to the website. I don't think they're gonna do it. I ain't never really teach the hopscotch mess, but I just know how to do it. Um, let me see. And I have videos on it also. I just have to find it. Maybe I can go through it and leave it in the link, but I don't know about all that. Let me see. Can't really get no good schematic. I should have uh, Be 
see if I can find something. I hope you got that. I was going to just show a big schematic and I want to do like a real world scenario. We standing in front of the unit. Yeah, this ain't gonna. I thought I had a schematic. I know I got some somewhere. I think you gotta find. I got a bunch of files. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this. I hope, 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 hope this was uh, helpful. Um, what I do with that? Hope, hope this was helpful. Anybody have any questions? Just leave a comment. Hopefully, I can get to them. I respond to them. Uh, if y'all feel this uh, information was useful and want me to continue to do it, give me some feedback of what things that I could change and. Um, make it more uh comprehensive like i say this is really my first first one i know how, i know how to troubleshoot i never really taught it in like a classroom setting but i'm gonna try to i guess do it my way and uh but hopefully this way is uh useful and um uh, but i'm also trying to make videos also um kind of linking to what i just showed so next time if, that I'm troubleshooting. I'm gonna make a video and try to link it to this video so you can see like the real world uh, application of me actually troubleshooting uh, using the basic, really the basic everyday, uh, everyday troubleshooting procedures. You know, but um, it's not that difficult. Anybody can get it. Like I said, it's not, not hard, hard at all, which I can see this a little, a little more. Because if I click on it, they're going to make me go to the site. Yeah, but uh, I'm, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and end this, though. And uh, like I said, if y'all feel that this video could be helpful, helpful uh, for anybody, Anybody want to start a new career or just get in, get into it? Like I say, do do a lot of research. There's a lot of guys on YouTube that uh, make videos are very smart. Just really uh, pack, make make it a habit. Do just do it all day, every day if you can. Just uh, get a, get a lot of different angles of how to do it. I know it's a lot of people make this trade seem like it's difficult, but it's really not. But you got to apply yourself. Uh, the more you apply yourself and try to educate yourself on your own time, um, you know, not just on 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 on, uh, on the clock. You know, um, I always tell people get please get this book, um, the Modern Refrigeration Handbook. This is a must if. You're not a technician unless you get one of these. And I think they got these in PDF forms. So you can download it on your computer. Actually, I'm gonna get one. I have one right here, but I'm gonna get one. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna get the PDF version also. This book is thick. 
I'm gonna get the PDF version so I can uh, so man I can do some teaching um, you know online on this book right here before I start I should have probably look up schematics and see if they got the hopscotch method in this book right here but I'm sure sure it does when I when I get off here, I'm going to look through this book right here. Like I said, it is, it is a must-have. Go out and get this book today if you don't got it. And if you're an experienced technician and you made it through this uh, through this far here, um, give somebody this book right here that you think they might need it. Uh, look it up online or give them the PDF version. I don't know if this paperback for $35 is. Usually these books are like $100-some dollars. But if they like $35, I'd get one. It's a number of pages, 498. I don't know. That might be them. If, if you can get this book for uh, $35, you need to go ahead and get it right now. If you don't have this book, and if you're still learning, you see this in here, 110. I don't really know if this is 35. They say paperback, but even if it's paperback, it's okay. This in here is hard, hard cover right here. But uh, get your hand on one of those books. Let's say, because everything we just talked about, from all the presser switches, the contactors, everything in this book, and it's probably they probably talk about uh, they'll probably talk about that one contactor and that one presser switch for a whole chapter, like ten pages. So anything you want to know about uh, you know a presser switch or an internal overload switch. You know, it's, it's gonna be in this book. So, go get the book. Plenty of knowledge in here. You, know, you, you can start reading it from front to back. But this should be a book right here that uh, you always should have with you. Whenever you're bored or something like that, you know, you can pick up this book and immerse yourself in it so you're gonna break it down and tell you what what all inside the a motor nah. start capacitor yeah everything in this book yeah like i said i love this book when i first started in the field uh, if it was something that i was working on like I said, they got the same example, example you know, the meter, the meter right here. They, see, they checking the capacitor on there, showing, they showing you, uh, you know, how to check capacitor with the unit, with voltage to and off the capacitor. You know, some capacitor have a resistor connected across the terminals, the resistor Visible at the capacitor terminal slowly bleeds the capacitor of its charge to lessen the arcing of the motor control points. It's a lot, of, like I said, you might have a whole chapter just on capacitor. You know, if you want to uh, understand capacitor, we're talking about on the run, start, and, and the common. The run starting coming right there, you know, on your on your motor or on your compressors. You know, it'll tell you exactly what your ohm should be and your windings. You know, then all of them at the end got tests. So, but uh, everybody, peace out. Be like and subscribe. Have a great day.